We're delighted that you chose to join us today to talk about what the future holds for dental professionals in the new year. Um, I will see you at the end of the presentation for a Q&A. There's a Q&A box at the bottom of your screen. Uh, please feel free to pop any questions in the box there and I will let Ryan take it away. Thank you, Megan. Uh, well, welcome everyone. I'm excited to talk to you all today. Um, I was especially nervous actually to talk to all you dental professionals. Uh, so I did, I can confirm, I flossed my teeth and brushed with some extra effort this morning. Um, but really enough about my dental hygiene. Um, today we'll be touching on two broader topics and then we're gonna be reviewing some innovations in the dental technology space. Um, and we're gonna have a cheeky sneak peek into some content from Intivio. Uh, but first a little bit about me. So my name is Ryan, as I mentioned, I'm the Vice President of Customer Experience at Intivio. I'm an investor and an advisor to many software startup companies. And I like to answer the question of why I joined Intivio. I think it gives a little bit about me from a, a, an aspect that you folks might appreciate. Um, and the reason why I joined Intivio really is that I'm a patient myself. Um, and I've actually personally had some kind of terrible experiences in the dental industry. Um, and I'm passionate about helping this particular space kind of provide that world-class patient experience. You know, there's so much room for improvement in this space that it really does excite me and drive me every day. Um, actually, quite a recent story. I had, um, I had some issues with my iPhone um, and I went into this with a frustrating mindset because it wasn't doing what I wanted it to do. So I booked an appointment. I went to Apple. And as soon as I went in, it was like a breath of fresh air. You know, everyone's probably been there or to some store like this where the walls were white. There was windows. There was natural daylight coming in. They knew why I was coming. They greeted me really nicely and well, um, and they resolved my issue. They listened to me and they educated me. Um, and it really was a frustrating, or should have been a frustrating experience, um, but it was a positive experience. And I think that's where we can you know, help our customers really is create that world-class patient experience. Um, but essentially enough about me, um, I'd love to dive into our first trend of 2024. And that trend really is the economic climate um, and how the economic climate will shift, you know, behaviors and focuses next year. So really the economic climate, it will be an important feature of next year's landscape. I think the important thing to remember here is that consumers and patients, you know, we're the same group and what affects consumers attitudes often affects kind of the same factors um, that affect patients. And that is how much they're willing to spend on healthcare. Um, so factoring in kind of these, you know, long term effects of inflation um, and unfortunately the likely increase of unemployment for 2024, um, you know, patients will have to be very discerning about which procedures they choose to pay out of pocket. Um, you know, if insurance and reimbursement rates for services kind of are altered, um, it can really impact the practices and that revenue stream um, and the bottom line. So there's never been a more important time to make sure that you know, appointments and filling the schedule are never been more important, basically. You want to make sure that diary or calendar, I should say, North America is completely full. So, you know, how this impacts your patients? Well, what this means really is that patients are much, much less likely to choose elective treatments, you know, treatments that have to be paid out of pocket. Um, for many patients without dental insurance, you know, some of these procedures, you know, they'll become inaccessible. Um, and some patients will have to forego treatments unless absolutely necessary. Um, and the best example I can think of here really is teeth whitening. Um, in a survey uh, conducted by the, uh, it was the AACD, I believe it was seven, over 70% of respondents said that they'd had teeth whitening. Um, so if many patients are foregoing this kind of unnecessary treatment, you know, think of how that percentage drop will impact revenue and what you can do at your practice. Um, of course, as a dental practice, you know, your first and foremost um, goal is to provide great dental health care for your patients. So this can be really challenging if you're trying to and worried about meeting your bottom line. Um, but it's not all doom and gloom. There is some good news. And the good news really is that you can employ some of these strategies that we'll talk about to delay today to deliver great dental health care and at the same time meet your bottom line. You know, times when the economic climate it presents challenges, it can also be the time of opportunity uh, to create really strong patient relationships. Um, so what we're going to do today is we're going to dive into some of these strategies 
um, and talk about them. And the first one that we're seeing really is your practice will need to be proactive in working with your patients on their dental health. You know, finding ways to support your patients in challenging financial times, um, it really has a twofold effect. And the first is that your patients, they, they truly get a sense of how much you value them. And this installs trust in your, in your practice. And the second really is meeting your patients where they're at can go a long way towards securing patient loyalty. And I'll get into that a little bit later in the presentation. So, you know, what can you do? Um, well, some of the examples that we're seeing proactive responses might include creating payment, pl payment plans for each treatment where there's that flexible payment option. Um, this can alleviate the financial stress and the concerns and really encourage more people to seek that unnecessary dental treatment, or sorry, necessary dental treatment. Um, and helping, second one I would, I would look at really is kind of helping patients to identify which treatments will be most supportive of their long-term dental health. And this can be done through patient education, uh, awareness campaigns, you know, helping patients understand the risks and the rewards of certain treatments. And then the third is that we're seeing, you know, understanding why your patients choose you um, so that you can kind of lean into those attributes and continue securing and building your client patient base. Um, actually, this is probably a good time to share a personal experience. Um, you know, so I used to live in East London back in the UK and uh, I moved to West London and I got a new dentist. And upon my first visit, there was garden furniture in the reception. Um, the walls were dark, the paint was peeling. It wasn't the most happiest environment that I walked into. Um, so I literally on the spot, I made up an excuse that I couldn't attend my appointment and I had to rush off. Um, and then I would travel 30 minutes back to my previous dentist. Um, and that lady, she asked me, she said, what, what made you come back? Because I know you moved quite far away. So I explained, you know, the ambiance, the environment and the experience that I had. Um, so it's really interesting to see that that was one of the reasons why I stayed and traveled further. So really what we want to be doing is leaning into these attributes to continue to, you know, securing patients, treatment after treatment. Um, but all this to say, you know, why the economic climate is going to present some challenges for next year and possibly beyond, a proactive response will really set your practice up for success. Um, but it's not the only change to really expect next year. Um, which leads me on to Gen Z. Um, many of these changes you can expect to see at your dental office stem from our second trend, which is Generation Z at the dental office. Now, this is an interesting one because, you know, Generation Z has been paying for their own dental care for years now. Um, and this will only increase in 2024 and beyond. Um, and you're probably asking, well, why are they paying for their own kind of dental care? Um, there's been a major increase, you know, more than ever before in part-time gigs, uh, part-time work, freelance jobs, um, self-employed folks. Um, you know, I have a face for radio, but a lot of these Gen Z folks, they're earning money through um, social media, TikTok, you know, self-employed kind of income streams. So they're paying for their own dental care. So really understanding, you know, the needs and the wants of Generation Z will be crucial to your success as a dental practice in many years to come. You know, these folks are today's patients, but they're also, they're also tomorrow's patients as well. So what we see in Gen Z is kind of this interesting mix of social media savvy, that desire to have face time with the healthcare providers and prioritizing the environment, which we'll get onto shortly. So touched on the role of social media, um, you know, Gen Z is that first digital native generation and they utilize technology and social media like no other generation. Um, you know, included in some of the ways is healthcare advice and information. Um, and I'll give you an example of that is there is a YouTuber called um, Teeth Talk Gal, and she racks up 5 million views a week. Um, and I think she's got over half a million subscribers now on her content. And it's all advice and information through visual learning. So, you know, with this social media impact, how does it affect your practice? Um, I was talking to one doctor and they remarked that their Gen Z patients, uh, he said that they turn up now, research their issue, they have plenty of questions, they even come with images to say like, is this what's going to happen to me? How does this work? So they're very educated um, through social media. 
And as strange as that may sound to some, you know, of our the, the different generations here, is offering knowledge on TikTok, as an example, will go much further in reaching Gen Z patients than any other tactic for establishing trust. Um, so this really kind of begs the question as how do we communicate with Gen Zs? Well, they obviously utilize technology for efficient communication, digital record keeping, and as well as appointment reminders. Um, one study put it that they're used to a world that operates quickly. They're used to fast responses and they love communicating by text. Um, you know, phone calls and voicemails, they're not meaningful to communicating with Gen Z. I was actually listening to the radio, uh, I think it was yesterday, and there was a topic that Gen Z folks do not like being called on their cell phone to the point where their friend or a close you know, acquaintance might phone them, they'll see the call come in, they'll ignore it, wait for it to die, and then they'll text the person back. Now, that's to me, that's mind boggling because it's someone you know to pick up the phone, it's quicker, but to this generation, you know, they want to be able to text communicate. And that's a phone number that they know and trust um, and someone that they obviously know and trust. So this ever evolving way of how Gen Z you know, uses language and communicates, it's best for your practice to keep that message direct and concise where possible. So how do we strategize for Gen Z? Well, you know, kind of returning to some of these tactics we outlined for keeping your practice healthy for next year really is offering payment plans and finding other ways to make dentistry accessible um, will be key. And then being able to offer sound reasoning for which these treatments are kind of the most meaningful, that will be meaningful to Gen Z. And then in some ways, appealing to the Gen Z demographics. And this includes really going back to basics. You know, meeting patients where they're at and finding ways to connect with them in order to achieve a great dental health outcome. Um, so what does meeting, you know, when I say meeting patients where they're at, you know, what does this really mean? I think this is a good segue into the environment. Um, you know, Gen Z is quickly becoming known as that sustainability generation. Um, they're prioritizing the environment and the impact and then how they spend their money. You know, another way of connecting with Gen Z is to really prioritize how your practice um, can be more sustainable. You know, less plastic, less overall waste, it will really impress these patients. Um, think about how many of you have an electric toothbrush. I know I do. I was talking to Megan earlier and she has an electric toothbrush as well. Um, yet so many dental offices will still give out that plastic toothbrush and a plastic bag um, when the patient leaves. And I was actually talking to a customer last week and they said that they've just started doing these, they called them uh, environmentally friendly cards. And they said that on the card it had, we've decided to help the planet and environment. And instead of giving you a toothbrush, it was plant a certain number of trees. Um, and it really resonated with that Generation Z and other generations as well. Um, so this really is a great example of kind of meeting patients where they're at in their head. So now that we've kind of tackled these broader trends, I'd love to dive into kind of some of the exciting innovations um, and changes that we're seeing come to the dental industry next year. And the first one really is innovations in dental technology. Um, so, you know, one of the exciting things I think to look forward to 2024 is that the impact of the different innovations. Um, so the takeaway if from if I was sitting in your seats really is to review these trends um, and I would reflect on how your practice you know, might be able to incorporate these innovations as they're relevant to your practice. Some are relevant, some might not be relevant. Um, but you know, let's get into the first innovation that we are seeing, which really is advancements in dental implants. Um, now these are projected to have a significant impact in 2024. A lot of these changes, they really stem from the fact that the industry now have the capacity to do computer generated placement and technology. Um, you know, recent improvements for dental implants, it's making it kind of easier predict the, to predict the outcome, um, which really goes a long way to ensuring that patient satisfaction, as well as that longevity of the implant itself. So what's the second innovation? And that's really cosmetic dentistry. Um, Cosmetic dentistry is a priority for many people, I would say. Um, I have an insecurity 
about my bottom teeth. Um, and I'm actually in the process of investigating my options. Um, now that we have a solution that can be almost invisible and fixed in months. So even with the economic climate that we've discussed, you know, cosmetic dentistry is still projected to have a major impact in 2024. Um, innovations such as, you know, dentistry, uh, smile design, that, that allows the dentist to really design and optimize smile for their patients and increasingly, with increasingly impressive results, to be honest. Um, and I think what we'll start to see is that AI, artificial intelligence, it will, will be used much more in predicting that cosmetic dentistry outcome, which really brings us on to um, artificial intelligence in you know, dental practices. Um, it's not just in cosmetics that we'll continue to see an increase in AI. Um, AI chatbots will be used to enhance that patient experience at your practice as well. You know, we as humans, we have so many decisions to make every single day, and those decisions drain our time, our energy, and our efficiency. You know, if you think of all the decisions that you've gone through this morning, um, I'll, I'll take you through my own. What time do I wake up? Do I go to the gym or do I not go to the gym? What do I do at the gym? What do I have for breakfast? What do I wear to the office? Do I go to the office? Do I work from home? Um, what do I eat for breakfast? What kind of coffee do I have? I then get in the car and then I'm driving and I've got a decision to make. There's a red light about to happen. Do I slow down now? Do I want to turn right because there's traffic? Oh, there's someone walking their dog. Like, you know, my brain, this is now 7.30 in the morning and I've made 30 decisions. It's exhausting. So there is a world one day where we might get in the car and we just sit and say, take me to Starbucks. Um, and all this innovation is being designed and implemented to really make us efficient as possible. So how this really applies to your practice is that, that we need to be automating certain parts of the patient experience and really focusing that time and energy on business critical decisions and items um, and reducing that mundane task from our day. And that's where you know, the role of AI at a dental practice is likely to really evolve over the next year and beyond. So another one is 3D printing. Um, you know, 3D printing is already in use in many dental offices. Um, and I think we'll continue to see a big impact of this innovation next year. I believe the market is expected to be you know, close to 7 billion by 2028. And one of those positive outcomes of 3D printing is that it contributes to a reduction in cost for dental practices. Um, and a couple of quick examples, I'm sure everyone's aware of these, but you've got 3D printing for uh, custom crowns, bridges, uh, dentures, and you know, significantly reducing that time in production enables faster treatment for patients, which in turn really is a faster treatment turnaround time, which means you can see more patients. So this is especially relevant given the impacts of the economic climate, um, that we've already discussed about meeting that bottom line. So, you know, we've covered a lot, um, but don't worry, there is a takeaway um, for everyone. Um, so I think, you know, if you're curious to dive a bit deeper into some of these trends for 2024, um, we'd like to offer early access to our guide. And our guide is the six trends in dental practices, dental practices need to know in 2024. Um, it will offer some great insight into what specifically might be applicable to your practice and what maybe some aren't. Um, and it will dive deep into some of the numbers that I've mentioned behind the trend and how your practice can respond to them. So I think at that point, I would love to open the floor up to any questions um, that the audience may have. Thank you so much, Ryan. Yeah, everyone, if you look at the bottom of their screen of your screen, there is a Q&A chat box that um, you can feel free to put some uh, questions in there and Ryan and I will answer those for you. So we'll give you a couple minutes to think up any questions and we'll be here for you. I want to say thanks everyone for attending. I appreciate um, everyone's taking the time out to, to listen and understand a little bit more about Intivio and what we're doing. Uh, as I say, my name is Ryan. I'm the Vice President of Customer Experience. Um, if you do want to get in touch, please just email support and direct it to me and I'd love to have a conversation with anyone um, that wants to you know, unpack some of these a little bit more. Absolutely. Thank you all for coming oh. and we would love to see you at our next one.